All right, guys. Um, in preparation for this video series, uh, I've got my wife with me out doing drills. Look, to rig these baits, you got to understand these baits, and that means understanding their motion. So you got to you got to feel, you got to know that motion, right? Okay. So, all right, let's let's do a few more. Let's do a few more. Okay. Swim bait. Luke. Swim bait. Swim bait. Fluke. Okay, that's good. Take out the garbage. No. <laughs> Ooh, ah. part two of this series where I get into discussing swim baits and um, the scented jerk shads or jerk shads streaks uh, any of the uh, any of the the fluke style baits that Z-Man makes um, before I get into talking specifically about the the hook selection and what I use them for and, and where I've got some of these these other products here that uh, may be a little bit confusing like like this uh, I, I just want to spend uh, just a second um, talking about uh, the differences between rigging a Laztec um, swim baits and flukes versus uh, you know some of the other brands that you may be used to. Uh, if you're not familiar with Laztec, um, it is an amazing product. It is the best soft plastic material made, hands down. I'm just going to say that, like nothing else even compares. Um, when you look at the flexibility, um, the softness, um, the amount of durability the material has. I mean, like, like look at this. I mean, this is. Talk about some super flexible stuff. I mean, people talk about, you know, like Cinco's and other things being soft, but I mean, man, this bait literally, I mean, it just like doubles over on itself. Um, one of the other great things about it, I think, is that it's incredibly buoyant. Um, so unlike things like Kitex or, you know, your Zooms uh, that, that are, you know, uh, fluke style baits that, that have a, a density that allows them to sink uh, in water, Z-Man baits typically, unless they are absolutely loaded with salt, will not sink. And, and the other complication that that brings up then is like, well, how do you do, you know, applications where, uh, you know, you, you want to rig something that stays up close to the top of the water, you know, like a fluke. A lot of times that's kind of a subsurface bait, right? Um, but you're, you're fishing it in, in the upper water column. So I can tell you that the, the fluke, um, you know, style baits out there, uh, you know, because they do sink naturally, you can just throw it on an unweighted hook. I really don't like that option with the Z-Man stuff. Um, you know, one of the other things too that, you know, I, I think you notice, even if you get a Z-Man bait that floats, um, as that bait stretches out and is in the water long enough that, that salt will uh, dissolve out of the bait and you may have a, a bait that starts the day um, sinking uh, and then it may end up floating. Um, so you're gonna need to account for that and how you rig. Um, and so with that in mind, I've, I've put together a selection of uh, weighted options here um, that uh, we're going to go over and I'm going to show you, you know, how I rig those and what baits I'm going to use those for. Um, so first of all, we're just going to get started here with, you know, your, your basic swim bait application. This is the uh, four inch diesel minnows right here. Uh, and this four inch diesel minnow, um, as you can see, I've got that um, Rated, weighted with uh, one of these Mustad 3 aught 8 ounce uh, grip pin hooks. Um, this is just a good all-around combination right here. Uh, this bait will sink uh, because it is weighted. Um, you're also going to be able to, um, you know, uh, cast this thing a long ways. Uh, it's, it's got a good amount of, of density to it with that weight. Um, the one thing I will say, though, is that sometimes if you want to be able to fish lower down in the water column, uh, you know, what I like to do, show you my setup here is I will actually rig it on with one of these this is a uh, little steel bass casting sinker and what you can do is just run that over the hook I've shown it in a, uh, another video where I was using it on flukes but you can run that over the hook I use a small piece of rubber band that I'll put uh, up above it and that will allow the bait to um, that will allow the bait to sink a little bit faster or if you need to cast into the wind but then that only allows you to carry um, you know one um, you know just one uh, hook size with you and then you can wait as you need to throughout the day for that application I will say too that these little bass casting sinkers with that split ring on there it does act like a weight transfer system and so man you talk about adding some casting distance holy cow you can really chuck these things another cool thing because this weight kind of is allowed to, to, to freely move 
I think as this bait sinks, it helps add a rocking motion to it uh, on its way down. And so I've noticed that, but with both the flukes and uh, with um, uh, with the uh, diesel minnows, as this kind of will add a little bit of a shimmy on the fall because of the way that bait um, is, is is kind of allowed to move around the weight. Uh, so it, it doesn't act like a keel uh, as much as you would if you had like a quarter inch weight down here. I think it would just pull it straight down. So I would highly recommend uh, putting together a selection of these. I've got some eighth ounce in here and then this larger size you see right here uh, is uh, five sixteenths of an ounce. And I just add, I, I just invested in some good split ring pliers and just add those split rings myself. So, uh, you know, when you're bored and happen to watch, I don't know, something on Netflix you really don't want to with the wife, like the crown or something like that. There you go. You can uh, spend some time with some split ring pliers and uh, kill some time that way in the off season. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's a, a four inch diesel minnow right there. All right. So the other thing I'm going to use this, this three out four right here is the five inch jerk shads. Um, if you haven't used the jerk shads, uh, this bait is about as good as it gets in terms of erratic action. Uh, again, because of the way that it's, uh, floats, um, you can fish this, I mean, as a top water. And when I say a top water, I mean, it is on the surface of the water. It's not like a fluke where, you know, it stays up there when you jerk it and then slowly sinks back down. This thing will, will sit up on the top of the water. And especially if you're trying to run that up over like hydrilla or, um, you know, something that's like a really thick sloppy mat, like, uh, wigging, rigging this unweighted is, is a pretty amazing technique. So, um, but uh, one of the things that, that uh, I, I, you know, if you're going to be using this subsurface at all, just, you know, I, I really like this three-aught hook. As you can see, I think it, it hits in the right spot on the bait in terms of where it needs to be to be rigged properly and, and get a good hook set. Um, you know, so that's, that's just an excellent combination. All right, so that is the three-aught size. Let's go to the five-aught. Or, excuse me, I've actually got this in a six-aught size. So this is a, a pretty healthy size hook. It doesn't look like it next to this thing because that is that is massive, and I'll show you what that's for in just a little bit. But this this uh, six-aught hook is a, is a pretty good size hook. And uh, you just saw it earlier uh, with the seven-inch uh, fluke right there. So this is the seven-inch uh, Senna Jerk Shads. And, um, you know, this bait, again, uh, this is an eighth of an ounce weight. Uh, this tends to really stay high in the water column uh, with this much elastic on it. And so I usually do rig this if I want to get it down a few inches with one of those, those sinkers that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I usually put about an eighth of an ounce on there, and that really helps um, get it down to about the three to four foot range uh, pretty comfortably when you're working it. And if you want it to go even deeper, like you're trying to target suspended fish, that's where I would step up to like that five sixteenth of an ounce. And again, you'll be surprised surprised with even with this bait being weighted how much um you know how much of an erratic action you can get out of this thing um it, it's it's really a very versatile bait once you've got you know i, I think the uh the the right uh, equipment to to get it to the depth presentation that you need uh so that is the six aught in the seven inch jerk shads and then here i've got it rigged on uh a, a diesel minnow within the five inch size now this five inch diesel minnow, you've, you've seen that in, if you've seen my other videos, you can tell this thing's been, been beat to hell. Um, it's, it's not looking as sharp as it did before, but uh, I've got this actually rigged up with uh, some twin spinner blades. And I, I will make this comment now. Um, I do not use uh, any of the um, twist, you know, twist wire, uh, center pin, um, you know, uh, spiral hook keepers. Uh, I, those things just do not work with the last tech very well. I know you can use them. Uh, there are people that do things like, you know, heat the, uh, heat the twist locks up with lighters, uh, to get them rigged into the bait. Um, that doesn't work very well in Oklahoma because of the uh, amount of wind that we're typically fishing in, uh, trying to, to manipulate a heater out on a boat where you're usually pretty exposed. It's just going to take forever. It's not a good use of your time. So uh, these grip pin hooks allow you to do exactly the same thing. The downside is, though, you don't see things like, you know, the owner, the flashy swimmer, you know, these other products that have the built-in spinner spinner baits uh, into them. Um, and the Elastec, like on these baits, this doesn't give you much room to add, like, the little spinners, uh, you know, that you see for, um, you know, some of their products, like the Ned Rigs and stuff like that. They, they don't really fit very well in these uh, swim baits. So what I use instead are these products here. Um, I've got, uh, this package is the Willow Leaf. Uh, I've got some Colorado bladed on, the, on that bait right there. But these things just slip over the hook. And as you can see, they just stay in place. 
and there you've added your spinner uh, flash on there. And frankly, I like the little two blades better uh, than just the single blade. I think it's a lot like a, uh, you know, a rig or, you know, double willow combination on a spinner bait. It just makes it look more like a, a school of, of minnows or shad. Um, and I'll tell you the other thing compared to the flashy swimmer, you know, the flashy swimmer has a lot of exposed wire on it. And if you're fishing like coontail, hydrilla, um, vegetation that's really heavy, like that will hang up on the uh, on on uh, the flashy swimmer. These have, you know, really more resistance to getting hung up in the weeds more than any other spinner combination I think I've ever seen. And it's because it's got this rubber casing around uh, the ball bearing. So there's just not much for, um, you know, vegetation to hang up on with this bait. So it is excellent working in, in heavy vegetation. Um, so this is really, I, I think, you know, a more versatile combination because now you've got like one set of hooks. You know, these don't cost very much. I think they're about three bucks a piece. They don't weigh very much. You can just carry a couple of those with you and you don't have to invest in a separate set of jig heads. So you can carry one hook size around with you and just add as you need to with these uh, and take off as you need to. And then you've got like a super versatile series of baits. All right, so now let's get to this big hook over here and I'll tell you about this thing. Uh, I don't have the packaging for this because they put it in kind of a large obnoxious blister pack that I don't like to carry around with me out on the water. Um, but this is the Z-Man uh, chin locks hooks. And uh, honestly, uh, for the weighted applications, I'm probably going to switch over to these from the Mustads. Um, they are, uh, as you can tell, like a really well-engineered uh, hook. Um, they, uh, I, think, I think this is a 10 ounce size. I think this is either a half or three-quarter ounce weight but you can see with that that uh like that little locking um protrusion they've got up there man that thing is precise and it's well engineered and it's aggressive your bait is not going to slip off of there now what you use this hook for is when you get into your massive seven inch uh diesel minnows and uh, as you've noticed there i've also glued an eye onto that so for reference <clears throat> here is the four inch diesel minnow so you can see what that looks like in comparison this is your this is your big boy bait right here um this is this is what you throw when you're you're convinced you're going to try to catch a 10 pounder even though you never will okay uh anyway um but uh so this uh this is i believe a 10 aught size again in this and it works superbly with uh the diesel minnow as you can see with that recessed hook channel in there um you know you can rig that a little bit more exposed and that thing has got plenty of uh plenty of, of hook gap to allow the hook to uh, to be exposed and to get set there. So uh, that pretty much gets us through uh, swim baits and fluke rigging. Uh, my next uh, series of, of videos will be on, I would say, uh, specialized techniques. Um, gonna be getting into uh, wacky rigging, um, nico rigging, um, and you know other types of like kind of specialized uh, floating worms too, uh, which is I know uh, a thing this time of year. Uh, coming up in the spring. So uh, I'm going to show you my version of, of the chicken rig uh, that I use with Z-Man products. Uh, so uh, that gets us into part two of the series. Thanks again for watching and uh, I'll get part three out shortly.